All right, guys, and welcome back to my channel. Right, in today's episode, as we are nearing the completion of this project, we're going to start building the body panels back up, putting the wings on, putting the bumper on, etc., etc. So I think the first place to start is going to be this front near side of wing. So let's get it on. This slots on and bolts up with acne screws. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to put all the bolts in loosely. And then once the bonnet's on and the other wing's on, everything else is on, I can then make sure all the panel gaps are as good as I can get them and then tighten it up. That's the best way to do it, I find. There are six screws across the top. Two behind the bumper, one behind the side skirt into the sill, and then two from behind the kick panels inside. They should all have 10 millimeter headed anti screws. Now these are like a core self tapper, which go in with a normal hex drive. Nice and easy. So that's the wing loosely put on. Next up is the bonnet stage, so I'm about to put a bonnet on. So I've given this a quick refurb, I've sanded it down, X-primed it and painted it black and it looks a lot better now because it was quite rusty. So the crep pins are long since gone, these are literally nails I cut down and I painted them black. And as you can see they work just as good, hold the clip nicely. Beautiful. Next up, I'm just going to mask along here a little bit because I'm about to put the bonnet on by myself, which isn't advised. So this should just help me um, protect the paintwork. As they say, this is not my first rodeo. I really wouldn't advise doing this by yourself, but sometimes you have to do these things. The bonnet bolts up with four M6 bolts. Top tip from me is to line everything up with the original paint marks. That way, nothing should need adjusting. It should just all line up perfectly. So next job, the cam cover is going to hit this area here. So you either need to dip this in or cut it out a little bit. So we're going to lower the bonnet down slowly, see where it touches, and then just have a little trim. So I'm not really happy with this bit here, so I think I'm just going to cut it out and get it gone. I mark where I want everything cutting with a sharpie, then I use a battery operated grinder with a 1mm cutting disc to cut through the unwanted metal. These discs make light work of thin body panels. Once removed, Boom. I dress the area with a file and then apply some rubber edging strip. This just avoids any sharp edges, it's much better. Right, so next job is this wing. This fits the same as the other side, but one thing I didn't mention before is you must fit the side repeater wiring through the inner wing before you bolt the wing up. You can't access this area afterwards, so don't forget. Right, this plug here is for the wideband oxygen sensor, and here's the loom for it. So I'm just going to, while the headlight's out, connect this up. And then I can feed this through the bulkhead. And I'm going to utilise the aerial loom grommet just to put the wire through because it's no longer used this. So the loom just runs up here, across here with the rest of the loom that's going to go through this hole here. Beautiful. Right, next job's fit the headlight assembly. Now unfortunately you cannot retain this here. This is the adjuster because it just fouls the pipe. You can't do anything about it. What I tend to do is just cut it. Fold the endo slightly so you can just put some pliers on it and still turn it. But yeah, it's just one of them things, unfortunately. So you know me now, guys, I can't put rusty screws like that back in. So I'm just going to give them a quick lick of paint, sand them down, make them look nice. Boom. The headlight just plugs in. Now, although every component has a separate plug, you can't get these wrong. Once wired up, the headlight should slot into the channel on the lower clips and bolt the slam panel using 8mm headed acne screws. Right, next up is the front bumper. So the bumper is just touching into corner here and here. So it just needs a little bit of a trim just to, just to get it in. But we're nearly there. It's, it's not bad to be fair. I'm quite happy with that. I offer the bumper up and mark the areas that need cutting with a permanent marker. I use a grinder to cut plastic. I find it cuts through really easily. You could also use a jigsaw or even a sharp knife, but this is my preferred tool. I try and cut away small amounts at a time, and then test fit, remark, cut again, and repeat. This way you don't have too much of the bumper off and you do get a better overall look. 
I then file off the edges. This then just a case of bolting up the bumper because it's held on with four M8 bolts and two 10 millimeter acne screws. I'm really happy with the final fit. Once the grill's all bolted up, you're never going to be able to tell. I then repeat the process with the grill. I use a flat disc and a de-bearing tool on the drill to carefully grind back the inner fins. Right guys, so the grill and the bumper are being trimmed back so it now fits around the intercooler and I've just made this little bracket up here. It's going to fit on top of here, rivet it on, and this is going to support the grill because the tabs are broken off. The brackets are made from aluminium sheet I'd laying around. I cut them to size and bent them in the vise. I attached them to the grill using 3.2 millimeter rivets. These little touches remind me of a classic hand-built racing car, something you don't see so often these days. Right guys, so I've attached the grill, I've made these nice fancy aluminium brackets which kind of follow the contours of the original plastic bracket. Obviously they were broken, so I've just made these. Grills now attach really nicely, I'm really happy with that, it fits well. You can't really tell there's an intercooler there, so I'm happy. So I'm going to wrap the video up here today, guys. Please show your support by hitting that subscribe button. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to be putting brand new gas coilovers on this and some brand new wheel wood brakes. Stay tuned for more. See you next week. Bye-bye.